Welcome to our city. So you're either really There's slow. There's a joke there, Mary. Come on, bring it. <laughs> you're either really slow or you're, if you're really slow, I'm really fast. <laughs> I doubt it's that I'm really fast. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Welcome to Thursday, May 11th work session. Call this meeting order. Do I hear adoption of the agenda? So moved. Second. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's great. And we have no guests with us. With that, we will go on to... 35th Avenue Northeast training remediation options, uh, Jeff. And Jeff has a guest tonight. Yes, uh, Rogers Harris from uh, Grant Osborne. They prepared a, a technical memorandum and uh, just like to go through that and answer any questions that are uh, related to that project. And, and that project kind of um, talk about what the options are and, and answer any questions that come from those. Okay. All right. So I'll just start if anybody wants to interject or anything, feel free to do so. Um, my first time in front of City of Lake Forest Parks Council, so thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, 35th Avenue drainage. Uh, currently, there is a storm drain pipe that uh, crosses 35th Avenue and goes around the house and discharges behind the house and then drains into, I think, what's commonly called Sheridan Creek, which is a tributary to um, the current outlet manhole, um, if you saw some of the photos in the report, is kind of uh, poorly supported. Most of the soil underneath it has uh, washed away or fallen away, and uh, there's also a, a fairly incised ravine from the discharge pipe down to Sheridan Creek, which I think has probably been there for a very long time because this appears to be the natural natural low spot in the area was probably the natural drainage way for the area. Uh, we took a look at options on what could be done to uh, resolve the issue. Um, there's, there's four that we've presented. One of them is to just replace the pipe system from 35th Avenue all the way to the outfall uh, and put in a new outfall that extends a little bit farther away from the home down to an area that's flatter, still still discharging into the ravine, not not into the creek. Um, so um, we can stay out of the critical areas there. I think we would be in the buffer for the outlet, but uh, that would help to uh, resolve some on continuing erosion that's occurring in the ravine um, and get the storm drainage away from the top of the slope where there's been some issues, uh, which I don't know if they're caused by the storm drainage issue uh, discharge or not. Well, that was one option. Uh, there's some difficulties with that option because the uh, the house that the pipe goes around on the north side, there's also a deck that fills up most of the setback on the north side. And the deck is only about four and a half, four feet off the ground. So any kind of equipment that would need to get back there, we'd, we'd probably have to remove the deck and then replace it, restore it. Um, if you don't do that, you would have to go on to other people's property to get to their property to work in their backyard. Um, I provided a, a little summary here of some of the, the costs and also the pros and cons, uh, severity of construction challenges. The second option would be to abandon this outfall, plug it and send all the, all the runoff to the north. Uh, on 35th Avenue, there's some existing pipes at the northern terminus of 35th Avenue that would have to be replaced. Construction would have to go down between the houses, down a slope, uh, and install a new outfall down there. Uh, because of the length um, of pipe, that option is more expensive just because the, there's more work for that. Um, the other option would be to go to the south and discharge where Sheridan Creek crosses 162nd. Uh, that is the most expensive option. Uh, one of the reasons for that is it's also the longest. Uh, I shouldn't say it's the most expensive. It's the second most expensive option. But it's, it's a long stretch. But because of the low spot that we're trying to pull water away from and divert to the south, the pipe gets very, very deep as it goes around the curve where 162nd and 35th kind of come at an obscure angle there. It gets very deep right in there, about 14, 15 feet deep. So the construction 
uh, effort is a lot deeper. Uh, there's more risks associated with that when you go deeper, especially on such a narrow road. Um, the fourth option that we came up with is sort of, it's a hybrid, and that would be to pick up the water that's coming north on 35th and divert that to the south in a smaller, shallower pipe system down to where the creek crosses 162nd. And that takes a lot of water away from the existing outfall. And we could continue to use the same pipes on the property, just add an extension of the outfall to get it away from the slope, if that makes sense. Um, the costs are provided here. Um, there are easements required, both temporary construction easements, permanent easements for all options. The number in those columns represents the number of properties affected. Uh, construction access, it's, it's difficult to get behind the one house where the existing outfall is, but it's not insurmountable. Uh, going to the north is more challenging because there's walls, some steeper areas, and a lot of trees between the houses that would probably all have to be removed in order to go down that route. Um, private disruption, that refers to the amount of disturbance that's going to be on an individual private property. Um, obviously, if we're, if we're replacing the pipe system around the house, there's a lot of disturbance there. Uh, the north route has a lot of disturbance uh, and involves more properties. Uh, the hybrid option, I put that as medium just, just because we're going to have to get in the backyard of the house. But um, the amount of work is a lot less, but you still have to get back there. It'll, it'll probably be smaller equipment, which is, which is good, but um, you still have to get back there. The permitting um, is fairly simple, fairly straightforward for most of them. And you just have to go through the process and, and do the reports that are necessary in, in that. So uh, those are all low to medium. And the utility conflicts, since you're digging in the road on the bottom three, uh, options two, three, and four, there's always gonna be utility conflicts. Um, they're not insurmountable. You can work around them. Uh, the, the third option is high because we're gonna be so deep. Um, that, that gets us out of the way of the utilities. But we also have to still dig around and be delicate with them and not damage those utilities. So that's why that's high. Uh, and also the hybrid option is high because of that. So that's a really brief presentation. And, and if you want to ask questions, or I don't know if you can pull the report up and get maps on the screen. If not, um, I have some map. I have just one copy of my report here, but uh, I'll entertain questions if anybody has any. Yes, Councilman. Thank you. Um, there's an existing ditch and, and waterway on 162nd. Could you divert the water that's on, uh, instead of putting it into a pipe all the way down to Sheridan Creek, could you use the existing drainage system there to pick up the water right across Sheridan Creek? Uh, you could probably use some of the ditch and then just replace the pipe in the places where there's existing pipe. And I guess the map doesn't really show where there is existing pipe. The only existing pipes are down here on 36. Uh, so there is an existing pipe system that yes. crosses uh, 36, and then it flows down and discharges into Sheridan Creek. Right. And I think there's I think there's a couple sections of maybe a, a driveway but yeah, there, or something. That's so, right. There are a yeah, couple that, that that would be an option. Where you're not having to dig into the street, you're in fact just uh, cleaning out the ditch and replacing the uh, uh, well, would you even need to replace them because they're probably uh, cast aside these concrete uh, pipes that run underneath the driveway? Uh, yeah, some of them are concrete, some are plastic. Um, I don't know. I don't think that they're large enough. So I think they're all 12 inch pipe and the ditches are fairly shallow. And I think we've specified that they would need to be 18 inch for the uh, hybrid option, but 24 inch for option number three. So that's quite a bit bigger. Right, but you'd only have uh, two driveways and a road. And then you could just uh, replace the outfall of the private property. Correct. From that uh, new manhole down. Yeah. And that would generate, uh, in terms of the total number of feet of pipe that you have, probably. But least amount of pipes. I guess I'd have to look a little closer, okay. you know, 
if, if we if we go with that option, I can certainly look during the sign and see if if we can build a dish that will be big enough and stable enough to convey the flow and, and not erode the shoulder load and damage and undercut the slopes or whatever. So yeah, we can certainly do that. Yeah. They're pretty vegetated now, so they don't erode. <laughs> Right. Well, there's not a whole lot of water in that direction. That's true. So. Mayor Frank. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a question. What is the best uh, solution for the environment? I mean, we can't fix everything. It's we've got things upslope, downslope that are broken all over the place. It would be six ways from Sunday. Right. Uh, well, the best solution would be to I don't think infiltration is an option here. I, we haven't done a lot of soil. We've done some soil testing in the area, but not everywhere. So I don't know that infiltration would be an option. Um, so the water is going to end up getting conveyed by a ditch or pipe all the way to the tree. Place. The treatment aspects, which I've provided costs if we treat the entire base that goes to wherever the outfall is. Also, a cost to treat just the roadway with the conveyance system. Uh, which is all technically that's all you're required to do if you were doing say a new development mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit more difficult to retrofit because we don't have a way to separate the non-roadway flows from the roadway flows right um, but so the best option for the environment would be to build an out ball in whichever location that's stable that doesn't cause erosion and puts this kind of treatment in for the runoff that's going that's untreated current Okay, so regardless of the, the the choice we make, the environment is going to be improved. Oh, I think it certainly will because yeah. the erosion in the ravine will be yeah. arrested. Yeah, and that'll stop sending sediment down into Sherry Creek and Clear Creek. And I think I mean I think we all want to have you know um, you know the, the, the create a system that works for the entire um, channel, so sure. to speak. It's not in the budget. So we're trying to figure out what's the most discreet way to make it as, as healthy as possible and yeah. remediates the problems that are in here. Right. Thank you. Good. So you mentioned uh, probably significant tree removal or, or tree impacts on the north route because of just where it's going through. Uh, could you let us know your your thoughts on on tree impacts for the other options, the the middle and the south? Yeah, so if we just replace the, the pipe system in, in the middle where the existing one is, there's a couple of cedar trees on the north side of the house that will be affected. I don't know if they'll have to be removed or not. Probably one of them will. Uh, the other one may be able to stay. Uh, going to the south, if we go with option three where we have the larger, deeper pipe, there's probably going to be more trees impacted because uh, our, you know, our trench is going to start to get a little wider as you get deeper uh, depending on the depending on how stable the soil is but um, there's no trenchless option uh, for this in this in this situation uh well i would say there's no trenchless option there's a couple ways to do trenchless one is is that you pull a pipe through a, an existing pipe and you burst it um, you obviously can't do that with ductile iron pipe. You can do it with concrete if it's non-reinforced concrete, but probably most of this pipe is non-reinforced concrete. You can certainly do it with plastic pipe. But one of the problems that you run into is you still have to dig a pit at the beginning to pull the pipe through, and you have to have a pit at the end to exit it. Um, we, we didn't look in detail in pipe bursting. Um, because you can only usually go up one pipe size. So if you wanted to go from 12 to 15, you could probably do that. If you want to go 12 to 18, uh, it's it's it may not work very well. And there can also be some collateral damage where you get the hump on, on the surface. And if you go under the rotors, you end up with that. But um, you could certainly uh, do what's called a directional drill, which is different um, than a boring directional drill you have a machine that will drill and you can actually guide it as long as you don't hit something like a boulder or a giant tree and you can you can steer it to a certain point um, and then you usually you then pull back and you remit a little bit bigger and then you pull your carrier pipe through there 
um, that can be very expensive and it's a little risky. Um, seems a little overkill for a storm drain line. With, you know, a lot of times they'll do that under a river for a water main or something like that. Um, so those are kind of the options that would be applicable here. I think we we didn't really look at them in detail. We sort of looked and said, this is not probably not going to pencil out here with these applications. So for the hybrid option, I mean, hasn't been looked at yet, but because that pipe will not be nearly as large because we're, we're splitting the flow, mm -hmm. would that be something worth looking at to see if we can minimize our impact to the community in the... In the when you say the hybrid option, are you talking coming down the south on 162nd or underneath the house? Um, do, doing uh, option four, where we're still going down 162nd, but we're diverting still some to the current right. outflow location. Or, um, uh, I, well, we're still we're still going to need an 18 inch pipe, so going still, from 12 okay. to 18 would be difficult. Um, yeah, I, my my gut feeling is, is that it, it probably isn't going to work. Okay. That's allowed. Thank you for those clarifications. Um, and uh, thank you very much for your report. And I'm um, following up on Deputy Mayor French's comment. I'm wondering, um, would the uh, treatment options, those would require the installation of vaults or something? Yes. Similar? And there would be an ongoing cost of maintenance. Of yes. Thanks. I just wanted to follow up on the options. Um, so, for example, option one. There's a conveyance only, and then a conveyance and full basin treatment, and then conveyance and road treatment only. Are the are the treatments, whether they're full or just road only, are they required? No. So the least cost option for us uh, would be option one to conveyance only. Correct. I can support that. I mean, yes. I would argue that um, if there's a way, and it sounds like there might be some complications, but to doing that road treatment, I mean, we know that the impacts of uh, the wash off from the roads is is impactful of our streams, and so I think reducing that would be something I'd still be interested. Um, if it's a viable option, it's not a, the largest uh, dollar cost increase, but I think we get a an environmental benefit that we would if we just sent it all straight to the stream. I think I'd rather see road treatment. Yes, yeah. and and one thing to to also remember is other than the north outfall option, option number two, um, the the size of the facility that would be down near the creek, you might be able to place that in the road, but all of these could be added later. Just fixing the conveyance system is not going to prevent you from adding treatment later. If it's a budget okay. issue or a timing, sure. Excellent. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> something I'm just trying to understand. So the hybrid option, can you kind of give a feel for like how much of options one and three make up the hybrid? Because it seems like the cost is very much similar to option three, whereas in terms of the severity, it, it is sort of in the middle. So how much of a hybrid is the hybrid? The hybrid is a reduction in the amount of work putting in the pipeline down 162nd. You end up with smaller pipe, much shallower construction. And that allows you to use all of the existing middle outfall system except for the outfall pipe, which we want to extend away from the slope. Um, so it 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 certainly carries less risk because you're shallower, a lot shallower. You're like four and a half feet versus 14 and a half feet um, in the deepest spot. Um, I don't know, is that answer, is that answering your question? Um, um, yeah, I mean, maybe you could go on. <clears throat> I'm trying to think how to phrase this. With the hybrid option, like what fraction of the water would be sent down kind of the existing middle system and what fraction of the water would be sent to the south? It's probably not half and half, but let me look at it. So you would be shifting roughly 10 cubic feet per second to the south and away from the middle. And right now the middle is seen.
Right now, the middle is C18. So you're taking 55% of the water, pretty close to 50. Yeah, 55, okay. 60% of what it's away from the Yep, thank you. That's all. There you go. This one last thought, Ms. Mayor, uh, for me, um, I appreciate your comment about that it's not going to preclude other you know, remedies down the line. Right? So to Mr. Lebo's point, the conveyance makes sense as long as we're not saying we can't fix the basin. We all recognize that needs to happen. I'm not suggesting unequivocally right now it's going to apply and decide this, but the conveyance only is the, the answer. But I want to make sure that we're through some of our programs, making sure we're going to again, literally down the line. <laughs> on this apropos, I guess. So, yep, I get it. That's something that during design we'll, we'll certainly consider yeah. and, and look at the spacing because you got utilities in the road that, you know, yeah. will come into play regardless. I mean, it's your, it's your road. So obviously you can, under your franchise agreement, you can ask utilities to move or whatever, but you prefer not to do that. And sometimes, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a major issue, but. We'll certainly look at them to make sure that they can have it. So obviously we have to kind of get this figured out pretty soon. So we can do that the summer. We don't want to do this in the middle of winter. Are we looking for spreads then? Well, I guess I was looking at what we would extend to you guys like to take. If I may, I would I would uh side with Mr. Lebo here on this one that let's at least start with the bands only and uh, make sure that we have, you know, adequate um, options to um, treat the, the road treatment as well, potentially in the near, near future. However, I have to say for $79,000 additional for the road treatment, that's, uh, that, that's very tempting, but I, I leave it up to the to my colleagues. The, the road treatment is really for the area that's uh, impacted, not for the entire road system. Correct. Going in. So you're not just, it's not, not the whole system. system. It's not the whole okay. system. Oh, I, so okay. it, it's basically the area of the trench that you go across the road. Thank you, John. And then that 79K doesn't make yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. It, we it, we it, have it, like, it's a little small, small area. I see. I was thinking of course it's down. You're, you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Trying to point out that. Yes. I got it. No, I think I think the clarification of the extent of the, the road treatment does make it seem more uh, money than we're getting a value for. I think it's good for us to keep in mind just in general, uh, bringing in road treatment when we do larger projects. Just keep that in our mind um, so we pre-treat as much water going into our streams. But I think I'm leaning towards conveyance only. I, I, I'm I okay with option one. It seems to do the job. Um, I did have a quick question. You mentioned that the, the deck, and I saw the photo, would the deck have to come out? Or is like, how, how what were you saying about the deck and how it's impeding your work? It's only about four feet high to walk underneath it. So any kind of machine just won't fit. I mean, maybe if it were 10 feet off the ground, you might think about getting a machine underneath there. But um, if, yeah, the machine that we're going to need probably will fit on um, we, we, we don't have the right person here to ask this question, but I think my thought is, would they be able to put that deck back, being that it's in the setback? And because, so I guess that's just a question, because it's grandfathered in where it is now, but could they rebuild it, or would this be an issue? And I don't know the answer to that, asking for Steve. That would be fun. Glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. so we don't need to unexpected issues no. around that later. <laughs> yeah, and, there, and there's a couple ways that to do this and we we deal with this all the time in the various places that we've worked when there's an impact on private property like somebody's driveway or maybe their front landscaping or something like that sometimes it's easier to have your contractor you know take the deck away and then somehow get a value for that and give that to the homeowner because Many times you can rebuild the deck and it could be perfect, except for the person who has to live in that. And you can't get it right. 
And, and that's especially true with yeah, any okay. kind of driveway or landscaping or anything. It's never right. And so you just end up spending a ton of money fighting with the property owner. And, and not all property owners are immediate to this, but in a lot of cases, you can, you know, you can ask the property owner to go get a quote. You could go get an independent quote. You could say, all right, the value of replacing this deck is, and we put $25,000 in the budget, is $25,000. So we're going to tear it down. And then you, homeowner, are going to get a check for twenty five dollars to replace your deck. And then the city's hands are washed of it. They, they, you know, get to build it the way they want and manage the contract the way they want and be happy with it. And you're not involved. And so you, they're not going to come back at you. Yeah. I think the only concern is it's in, currently they wouldn't be able to build it there. Uh, so. No, no decks allowed in the center. But possibly not. That's what we have to look yeah, at. Let's, that. let's, let's, let's see. Yeah. 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 No. Um, yeah, I think I'm also leaning towards um, option one, the conveyance only. And I suppose I'm looking at it through like cost benefit lens, and that going from option one to any of the other options substantially increases the costs. And while there are some benefits, I, I'm just not seeing enough benefits to justify adding, say, four or $500,000 to the total cost. So that's, that's why I'm leaning towards option one. Okay. But, yeah. I do agree. And uh, yeah, uh, on the matter of the uh, road treatment, I think it's a great idea in general. But if you look at the, the maps, and thanks for the great maps, um, yeah. that sub basin is a tiny fraction of the whole basin in that area. So, yeah, it, you know, it'd be nice as a pilot project, but we can't afford a pilot project. So, we need a bigger picture. Yeah. 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 Yes. Great. Yeah, he's got some idea of what you want to do. Uh, that's great. All right, so go. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Those, those, those were those were excellent questions. I I love when my clients are engaged. Yeah, yeah. It helps me. Yes, each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. And I guess you have some more to talk about. Hey, yeah. man. I don't know. We got all kinds of time. Thanks, uh, bro. Oh, you pause? Okay. Wow. So, we're done then? You're buying his dinner. Yeah. Great boss. Taco Bell is right up to the three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We put those big boxes in tacos. And this time, we'll give a like Jeffrey this meeting. Um, can you turn off the recording?